Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I wanted to do something a little different, which is to test a generic uh, microphone for loudspeaker distortion measurement. And so this may seem initially a little bit ridiculous. Um, I'm not really afraid to do some, as you know, I'm not afraid to do some experimenting. Why choose the Shure SM58 for distortion measurement? So a few things, um, first of all, this microphone I have a lot of experience with. I've been doing live sound mixing for over a decade. And so this is the most common microphone used and it's relatively affordable, but that's not why it's popular. There's cert there's a, uh, the sound quality on these microphones is pretty hard to beat. Um, the capability uh, on these for detail and low level detail retrieval on these are, are excellent. And so this is why I thought perhaps I should give this microphone a try. Um, please, please understand, I, I do fully understand that this is not a, a measurement microphone. It's strictly to look at intermodulation distortion, which is looking at the difference between the, the the peak of the fundamental test tone and where the noise floor is, uh, you know, where the noise products are in the loudspeaker that you're trying to measure. And so it certainly became clear that the condenser microphones that are used in loudspeaker measurement have a noise floor. And in the case of the Dayton Audio UMM6, uh, that was 65 dB down from the fundamental tones. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just doing a quick measurement comparing the Dayton Audio, uh, which uses a quarter inch capsule condenser microphone. The Shure SM58 uses a much larger diaphragm. And so uh, potentially it has less noise uh, when measuring loudspeakers. So you can see here, um, this is the multi-tone test of the Dayton UMM6 with the ES600 by radial horn with a um, the compression driver that I was using is the um, SB Audience 65 CDNT. And so I'm just playing um, a multi-tone signal from one kilohertz up to 10 kilohertz. And you can see here that the noise floor is at minus 63 dB. And so that's the difference between the, the, the top of the tones. And then you can see here the sideband products being generated or the grass, so to speak, that um, there's, it's a consistent, you know, noise profile that's level across the, the bandwidth that we're testing. And so when I switch to the Shure SM57 using a Tascam US1641 microphone preamp, you can see that in the exact same test setup, um, the noise is lowered by a significant m amount. So we're now at minus 80 dB, okay, and, and at 1.5 kilohertz. And so something is clearly different between the two microphones, the Shure SM57 is revealing uh, the actual distortion profile of the driver under test. Okay, so we can see that it's very low in the in the mid, and then as you move up into the treble, there's there's a little bit more noise uh, created. Okay, so uh, interesting test. Um, now that doesn't mean that I'm going to use this for um, you know indefinitely moving forward. Um, in a few months, I'm going to purchase a proper. Uh, dynamic microphone that has a much flatter response and uh, recently I tried out the uh, Scarlet Solo mic preamp that's very affordable at around 150 Canadian dollars. I did a comparison between that and the, the Tascam preamp and they both had the exact same uh, distortion and so I think I'm moving forward I'll be using the Scarlet Solo with this SM57 okay so um, you may see this mic used in future tests, uh, but just know that this is just me having some fun. Uh, if you want to replicate this as a DIY enthusiast, then it allows you to do this in, a, in an affordable way. Um, obviously, this is not laboratory grade equipment, and so we're just trying to get our test set up. You know, being able to see the actual distortion of the loudspeakers that we're trying to measure. So that's it for today. Take care. Have a great day.